reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Some Pharisees came to Jesus, and to test him they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause? He answered, Have you not read that the one who made them at the beginning made them male and female? And he said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses command us to give a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her? He said to them, It was because you were so hard-hearted that Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another, commits adultery and he who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The disciples said to him, If such is the case of a man with his wife, is it better not to marry? But he said to them, Not everyone can accept this teaching, but only those whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who have been so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by others, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Let anyone accept this who can. Well, this is a difficult passage for us to study today. Historically, in Jewish culture, when a man and a woman were married, the power obviously was all with the man. And during, um, during the Old Testament, during uh, Hebrew scriptures and in this modern uh, Jewish culture that Jesus was speaking to, a man could divorce his wife for pretty much any reason. And women had very little power in their relationships. And what Jesus is doing in this passage is actually creating an equal balance in this covenant. A covenant in which both a husband and a wife, both partners, uh, were covenanting, were promising the same things. And that one partner didn't have a way out uh, compared to the other. So there's something here that is actually really beautiful and very empowering in which Jesus is trying to level the playing field between the two partners that are covenanted in marriage. For us, the reality is, as we live in a world in which divorce is fairly prevalent, it is part of life. We also believe that marriage is entered into in a lifelong covenant between two people before God. And as somebody who officiates weddings and counsels individuals as they're preparing to enter into this covenant, that's how we speak. That's what we believe. But there's also times in which a relationship or a covenant no longer becomes healthy, in which God is not glorified and a human person is not dignified in that relationship. And there are times and places in which covenants need to be broken. That's the world we live in. And no matter what, whether one is married, divorced, or living a life in which you're not entered into that type of long-term commitment with another person, God loves you. We don't need to sit here and debate uh, your track record or anyone else's track record for that matter. This is a powerful reading. It's one to be studied and, and respected. And at the same time, the greatest thing we know about God and the greatest commandment we know is to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And also we have confidence that each of us are beloved children of God, no matter what. Amen.